We are live. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. We'll give it a moment for our participants to join the Zoom. Excuse me, Denise? Yes, yes. Yes? Okay, I think uh, we will go ahead and get started. Good night, good night, good evening, everyone. We're happy to have you here. Welcome to the first in a series of community sessions on the search for a new superintendent for Boston Public Schools. My name is Denise Snyder. I'm the acting chief for family and community advancement for Boston Public Schools. My colleague Miriam Ortiz and I will be supporting tonight's conversation. We are also offering interpretation this evening. Miriam, may I ask you to introduce our interpreters, please? This is Miriam speaking. Thank you, Denise. Hello, everyone, and please welcome our interpreters for tonight. We have Wei Li for Mandarin. Wei Li, can you hear us? Hello, hi, man. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is um, Wei. I'm your Mandarin interpreter tonight. Hey, 大家好，我是您的呃普通话国语翻译。Wei， 如果您需要翻译的话呢，请点击屏幕下方的地球仪，然后点击国语啊、uh, Mandarin 翻译频道。如果您使用手机或者平板电脑的话呢，请找三，你请找三个点，然后呢选择更多，然后进入这个国语翻译频道。Okay, back to you, man. Thank you. We also have Maple for Cantonese on the Chinese channel. Thank you, Miriam. I am the Cantonese interpreter tonight. 大家好，我系今晚大家嘅广东话翻译嚟嘅。咁一阵我哋会开启呢个翻译嘅频道啦，请大家喺屏幕嘅下方寻找地球仪嘅标志，点入去之后咧，你系要拣 Chinese 呢个频道，系 C 开头嘅呢个字母下，咁 Chinese。咁如果你系用平板电脑或者手机上网咧，你要喺屏幕嘅下方咧去点击三个点，写住更多啦，然后搵语言服务，亦都系进入 Chinese 呢个频道。咁我哋一阵见啦 ，Thank you。Thank you, Maple. For Arabic, we have Ahmed. Hello, everyone. My name is Ahmed Arubai. I will be your Arabic interpreter today. Marhaban. Ana ismi Ahmed Arubai. Ana muterjima lugha al-Arabiya li hada al-yom. Bimkanakum istima' ila terjima bil-lugha al-Arabiya min khilal al-dihab ila asfal al-shasha. Sat shahidun alamat al-kol al-ardiya. Udhut ala hadi al-alama wa inda istimakum min istima' ila akhtiarat al-lughat. قم بالاختيار اللغة العربية وستمكن من استماع إلى الترجمة الفورية كاملة. شكرا جزيلا. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you. In the French channel, we have Angel. Hi, Miriam. My name is Angel. I will be your French interpreter today. Bonsoir. Je m'appelle Angel. Je serai votre interprète ce soir. Uh, si vous voulez écouter l'interprétation en français directement, allez en bas de votre écran. Vous allez voir le globe qui est là. Vous, et il y a une liste de, de langues qui est mise là-bas. Vous choisissez le français et vous allez m'écouter directement. Vous interprétez la réunion de ce soir en français. Merci beaucoup et à tantôt. Miriam, back to you. Thank you. In Haitian Creole channel, we have Nadesh. Bonsoir, good evening, everyone. Bonsoir. C'est un réel plaisir pour moi d'interpréter pour nous à soi. Donc, moi, j'espère que nous allons apporter un bon service pour nous. Tant pis, appuyez sur le blanc qui est créole, haïtien. Et puis, pas oublier de taper une question dans le chat. Merci. Si vous avez une question, pas oublier de nous connaître. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for Somali interpretation, we have Fatuma on the Korean channel. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Fatuma Hassan. I'm here for the interpreter today. Galabun Aksan, when you had the lay high in Hamaka Ego of Fatuma Hassan, we had to go in the interjuma of Kuba Hunter Jumada, and we had the Gali San General Kamar of the Mesha Shishado Sukutal, General Kutal Korean, so Taki Somali by Web of Semi. Thank you. 
Thank you, Fatima. Uh, in the Spanish channel, we have Karen. Good afternoon, my name is Karen and I will be your Spanish interpreter today. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Karen y voy a ser su intérprete en español el día de hoy. Gracias. Thank you. Uh, in the Cabo Verdean channel, we have Armando. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Armando Monteiro. I'm going to be your okay, Kevorian interpreter tonight. Uh, boa noite, senhoras e senhores. Meu nome é Armando Monteiro. Então, vem ser o intérprete de crioulo Cabo Verdeano. Para nós acessar a nossa site, nós estamos naquele globo na parte inferior do computador. Bota fazer um clique e botar uma opção de escolha de língua que é crioulo Cabo Verdeano. Muito obrigado. Boa noite. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you. In the Vietnamese channel, we have the... Good evening, everyone. My name is V. I will be your Vietnamese interpreter for tonight's meeting. Kính chào quý vị. Tôi tên là V. Tôi sẽ là thông dịch viên của quý vị ngày hôm nay. Xin quý vị nhìn vào màn hình và tìm quả cầu. Khi tìm thấy quả cầu thì bấm vào tiếng Việt để có thể nghe được thông dịch viên dịch lại cho quý vị hiểu. Cảm ơn rất nhiều. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, in the Portuguese channel, we have Rosian. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Rosiane, and I'll be your Portuguese uh, interpreter tonight. Um, boa noite a todos. O meu nome é Rosiane, e eu vou ser a sua intérprete uh, para a reunião dessa noite. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you. Back to you, Denise. Thank you, Miriam. This is Denise speaking again. We will now turn on the interpretation feature. Please note that everyone needs to join a channel, including English speakers. If you want to listen to the conversation in English, for example, please join the English channel by clicking on the globe icon at the bottom of your screen. To support our ASL interpreters, please name yourself before speaking. Tonight's meeting, including a transcript of this chat, is being recorded to serve as a resource for search committee members and for those who cannot be with us this evening. At this time, I'd like to turn the microphone over to our search committee host for this evening, Dr. Pam Edinger, president of Bunker Hill Community College and one of the co-chairs of tonight's search committee, and Ms. Roxy Harvey, chair of Boston SPEDPAC and also a member of our search committee. They will both formally kick off tonight's session. Pam, over to you. Thank you. This is Pam Edinger speaking. Thank you, Denise, and welcome everyone to the first of our community listening sessions. These sessions are critical opportunities to gather feedback from families, students, community partners, and the general public regarding the qualities and characteristics Boston wants to see embodied in our next superintendent. But before we get to the agenda, I'd like to briefly introduce members of our search committee and school committee who are present here tonight to, to listen to you. Um, so I'm gonna ask the members to please go ahead and turn on the video for a brief moment to be recognized. So have, we have Mr. Michael O'Neill, the vice chair of the Boston School Committee. Ms. Lorena Lopera, member of the Boston School Committee and search committee co-chair. Mr. Marcus McNeil, student at Fenway High School and search committee co-chair. Mr. Jose Valenzuela, educator at Boston Latin Academy. Mr. Gene Roundtree, secondary school superintendent at Boston Public Schools. Dr. Carlene Pignato, head of the school at the Channing Elementary School. And we have Ms. Jessica Tang, president of the Boston Teachers Union. We have Dr. Jerry Robinson, chair of the Boston School Committee. We have also joining us tonight, um, Aaron Murphy, our city councilor at large, welcome. Now I would like to take an opportunity to acknowledge the Boston Public School Office of Family and Community Advancement as our co-sponsor for tonight and for the outreach they did to ensure such a great turnout. And to thank all of you for participating and encouraging your networks to do the same. We had 207 individuals sign up to participate tonight, and I'm sure those numbers will grow. Um, Roxy, would you like to pick up and kick off the agenda? Absolutely, thank you, Pam. You're welcome. Uh, greetings, everyone. As Pam mentioned, my name is Roxy Harvey, um, and I just wanna start with um, 
first just kind of acknowledging some things that I have heard just as a BPS parent that I, I, I just want to bring to the forefront so there's no elephants in the room, basically. One thing that I've heard repeatedly in different venues is that this, these listening sessions are more performative um, and there are people that we're not really listening. I want to be completely 100% authentic and say to you and to everyone here that I really believe all the search committee members, including myself, are listening and generally taking the feedback from the notes and that this is not just a check the box process. Um, and another concern that's repeatedly been raised um, that I've heard is basically with our, parent, our three parent supported groups of BBS. One is mine um, that I'm the chair of SPEDPAC, Special Education Parent Advisory Council, but also Citywide Parent Council, CPC, and District English Learners Advisory Council, DLAC, that there was concern that they weren't engaged from the beginning process of even picking dates and times and really working with the BPS supported families. So, oh, let me speak closer. So I just want to acknowledge that that has been said and it's been feedback that has been shared with um, the committee members along with um, questions surrounding why is it only um, an English listening se session with a uh, Spanish listening session with English interpretation instead of at least the three major languages, including Haitian Creole and Cabo Verdean Creole. So I want to acknowledge I've heard those comments in multiple venues and they have been shared and they are acknowledged here. We are listening to this feedback and really trying to make this the best process so that everyone can really be a voice here um, throughout all these listening sessions. But as far as the details now, let me really get into the, that the fact that the search the search for the boss's next superintendent is one of the most important decisions our Boston Public Schools community will make. And that is why it's very important that everyone come out and not feel that they're not a part of this process because all of our families and communities are part of this process. And the only way to do this work well is to get input from you. In addition to being able to speak tonight, please note that the BPS community and community stakeholders are also invited to provide written feedback to the email address superintendentsearch at bostonpublicschools.org. We're also generating a public feedback survey, which will be shared with the community next week. Our goal here is to have a new district leader in place by the end of the school year. These listening sessions are one of the first steps in this process. Your feedback will be reviewed by the search committee as well as an external search firm. We will use this input to draft an updated superintendent job description. After posting the position throughout April and into May, the search firm will complete initial vetting and background checks on the candidates. Then the search committee will review applications and select candidates to interview in confidential executive sessions. Following those initial rounds, the search committee will select finalists for public presentation. At that point, it's my hope that the search firm will be able to provide further vetting information that includes input received from community members that the final candidates have worked with, including their districts, um, special ed CPACs, Office of English Learners, and really get a feel of who these final candidates are. In late June, following public interviews with finalists, the school committee will vote on which candidate to offer the position of superintendent. At this time, I'd like to turn the microphone to Miriam Ortiz, who will moderate our public com comment process. When public comment is complete, we'll wrap up with some reminders about additional ways for the public to be involved. Thank you. This is Miriam speaking. We will now move to the public comment portion of our session. Please note that we have created three questions to guide our feedback collection. The questions which we will drop in the chat are, what are the three most important qualities or experiences our next superintendent should hold? What question would you most like a candidate for the position to answer? And how can the next superintendent partner with the community to be successful? To participate, Please use the raised hand feature and we will call on you to speak. Please be sure your name is correctly displayed and that your video is on. In order to hear from as many voices as possible, 
Remarks are limited to two minutes or to four minutes if a speaker needs interpretation support. We would also ask that participants only speak once until all who wish to speak have had the opportunity to do so. We will take as many speakers as time allows. The session will end at 8 p.m. If any speakers would prefer to submit comments in writing, please email your comments to Superintendent Search at Boston Public Schools. That org. As a reminder, please speak slowly so our interpreters can translate all the information we have to share. Our first five speakers will be Karen Wonton, Justin Beaton, Courtney Philly Carp, and Alia. Elia Werner, I apologize if I mispronounce your name. Well, Karen, you can unmute. Karen, are you with us? Let's move to Justin. I see Karen is here, but we're not hearing you. Karen, can you unmute? Okay, um, I'm not sure if Karen's having a technical issue. Maybe we'll come back to her. Um, is Justin here? I think Justin noted that he had pushed a button by mistake. Uh, oh. Please remove him from the, uh, or remove Justin from the uh, speakers list. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Let's go with Courtney Philly Carp. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Um, my name is Courtney Philly Carp. I'm a parent at the Henderson Inclusion School and the parent rep on the CY Parent Council. Um, thank you for providing these opportunities for the community I've been put on the superintendent search. As um, Roxy had already sort of spoke to um, and made aware um, that this is obviously a very important time and we really hope that this committee takes the feedback seriously um, given sort of the uh, need to have a superintendent who will be sort of a provide a long-term permanent fixture in our community to provide the solutions we've all been talking about for quite some time. I think what's been most evident over the last couple of years, particularly during the COVID times, but also as a result of the building or the school makeup transfers is that transportation infrastructure remain two critical issues that need to be addressed by the district. And I have no <laughs> doubt in saying they're probably the two most difficult district-wide issues to deal with parking exam schools. And, but that they are not something that necessarily school administrators come to naturally or have the experience to manage effectively. Um, while I, as a parent of a special education student, I am firmly of the belief that we need to have a principal who brings equity and inclusion principles to bear um, throughout our entire district and not just schools that bear the inclusion label. I also think it's important to ensure those principles of equity 
that we provide the basic foundation infrastructure necessary for our students to achieve the academic potential we know they all have. If a student spends two hours on buses that come only twice a week, that's not acceptable. If ventilation is provided by an open window, that's not acceptable. Um, we have learned a lot in these past two years about our infrastructure needs. And I really think that we need to have a superintendent familiar with the Boston Public Schools, familiar with our area, and will bring a vision, not just for the academic, achieving the academic potential for our kids, but the underlying skills to implement them, particularly through these more sort of foundational issues that I fully appreciate are far less sexy to talk about in a job interview, but at the end of the day are essential if we're gonna achieve any kind of equity in our system and allow our students to perform to their capabilities. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Courtney. Um, our next speaker is Atiyat. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Atia Timmet. I am uh, the La Co-Chair. I think uh, the previous speaker uh, covered most of what I wanted to share with you or to add. But um, uh, for how uh, for for how um, uh, to to be successful for the second for the upcoming uh, superintendents to be to be successful. I think community engagement in bottleneck analysis and solving problems is a key issue because um, uh, regardless of the, coming, the upcoming uh, superintendent knowledge and capacities, uh, there are so many different cultures and different backgrounds. So community engagement, uh, community leader engagement is the key uh, for the, for the uh, superintendent to be successful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to um, take this opportunity to acknowledge um, District 2 City Councilor Ed Flynn, um, who is with us tonight. Thank you for joining us um, to listen uh, to your constituents. I'm going to ask Mike Heishman next. Mike, are you with us? I see his hand is down, but I'm not sure. Uh, uh, am I on now? Yes. Hi, Mike. You would think I would know how to do it by now. <laughs> Mike Heisman, Beja, Dorchester. Everything related to the firing of Dr. Casilius and the search for her replacement once again demonstrates why Boston needs an elected school committee. Mayor Wu fired Dr. Caselius, or was it Commissioner Riley? Why was she fired? I want to see a video report of the meeting that took place between Mayor Wu, Dr. Caselius, and Chair Robinson. Important decisions like this one needs to be made in the sunshine, visible to the public, not in secrecy and behind the curtains. This process is not what democracy looks like. The mayor's conducting a serious search for the next police commissioner. The selection of a superintendent of schools is more important. Why the rush to judgment? Why, why do we have to have a candidate selected by the end of June? Based on past experiences, our goal should be to have an excellent process involving the community with a new superintendent taking office in 12 to 15 months. This process is not what democracy looks like. Mayor Wu and Chair Robinson meets and selects the members of the search committee. This process is not what democracy looks like. For many years now, the position of superintendent has been a temporary one. This process provides me with no faith that the results this time will be better. Therefore, I recommend that we find the best possible candidate who would feel comfortable accepting a three month contract. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Um, before I call our next speaker, I just wanna call the attention of our Spanish interpreter. We're seeing some comments in the chat that your sound is not very clear. 
If you could adjust your microphone, perhaps that may help. Um, and thank you for that. Um, our next speaker is Travis Marshall. Hi, good evening. My name is Travis Marshall. I live in Roslindale and I am the parent of two students at the Phineas Bates Elementary School. The next superintendent uh, should be a proven listener and collaborator. They should have experience as a direct stakeholder in Boston Public Schools and have a good understanding of the district and the climate. The next superintendent must actively, but also regularly solicit input from their school leaders and teachers who work with our students each and every day. Working as a leader means listening to the experience of those whom you lead. And that disconnect was one of the major stumbling blocks for the previous superintendent or our current superintendent. Uh, that said, the next superintendent must continue the work begun under Dr. Caselius to increase inclusion and opportunity in all of our schools. The next superintendent must continue to bridge the gaps in opportunity that offer robust academics and enrichment to only some students while leaving many others behind. The continued expansion of the seventh, uh, seventh grade, eighth grade expansions in open enrollment high schools uh, and redesign of curriculum is hugely important. Um, and I, I don't want us to slide backwards and revert to the status quo that plagued this uh, school system for so many years. Thank you so much. Thank you, Travis. Our next speaker is Dean Powers. Hi, thank you so much for doing this and thank you so much for giving us all the opportunity to participate. Um, I'm kind of a mess right now because I'm cooking three different dinners while I'm trying to do this and one of the dinners is for my dog who it turns out has a very sensitive stomach. Um, I wanted to say I actually am really excited about this process. I think this is an opportunity for us to get it right. Um, I'm, we have a mayor now who is a BPS parent and who knows what the struggle is. And that puts us in a great position and a position I, we haven't been in since I signed in to BPS for the first time in, I guess, um, 2011. Um, a lot of you know me from harassing you about the Jackson man. And um, my daughter was a student there until last year. And I spent years saying, I know that this school is gonna close and being told, oh no, it's, it's not, it's gonna be fine. And it is closing. And so for me, the most important thing that the new superintendent can provide is transparency and a working relationship with the community and faith in us. Because I feel like there's been a perception that we can't handle the tough decisions and we can't handle the hard truths. And if we had been told years ago, yeah, we're gonna close the Jackson Man. Those students are gonna have to transfer. Those teachers are gonna have to find new jobs. And you know, the school's gonna fall down if we don't. So <laughs> this is something that has to be done. We could have handled it. Um, we would have made that tough decision as a community and move forward with the hard work together. So that's what I'm asking for all of you as you go forward with this decision, find someone who has faith in us, who believes that we are competent and mature and dedicated enough to be partners in the process. Um, I can promise you I will do my part. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zine. I wanna pause for a second um, and apologize to our Spanish speaker audience, Spanish speaking audience, because for some reason, um, the the sound in the Spanish channel is is very choppy and and it's not um, heard well. I'll, I'll use this opportunity to remind all of you that we have a Spanish speaker session next week, uh, March fifteenth. So I apologize that we're having 
this difficulty um, and um, just, you know, bear with us and hopefully you can join us uh, for our next one where we can correct this issue. Our next speaker is Franklin Peralta. Hello, everybody. Sorry, too many buttons to click. My name is Franklin Peralta. I'm a parent at BPS, Thea and Cleo, who attend the Sarah Greenwood School. She's here and Cleo is running around. Um, my comment is, here's Cleo too. Mm, just just my comment is, can we, can we hire somebody that already knows the district and is familiar with the district. Um, like, if it's gonna take that person two years to get to know us and our issues and our opportunities and they, they are gone, we can save these two years. And this is Boston, right? We, we are the beacon of education. So why can't we get somebody from here that knows us and knows some solutions? I, I don't, understand how these things works. Like in one hand, when Michelle Wu was running for mayor, one of the line of attack against Michelle was that she wasn't from here. But then we are fine with bringing somebody from outside that's gonna be, that really needs to know the issue of the district. Like wh why can we not hire somebody that is already familiar with our issues? That's, that's my comment. I think we have, plenty of talent and experience and expertise in BPS, in our college and universities. Let's find, let, let's find the, the person that can be with us for a longer time than just the time to get to know the district and then they are gone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Samantha Weintraub. Sorry if I misspelled your name, mispronounced it. Hi everyone, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, um, you pronounced it correctly, thank you. Um, hi everyone, my name is Samantha Weintraub. I am a fourth grade SEI teacher at the Sumner School in Rosendale. I'm also a um, proud BTU building representative. Um, I'd really like to echo some of the comments that were made by the last gentleman, I'm sorry that, um, I wasn't able to catch his name. Um, first, before I say what I'd like to be looking for uh, in our next superintendent, I'd like to give um, some feedback on the way that this forum was put together. I don't think a lot of families um, were aware of this. I think any way we can get this out into the public um, more is needed. Um, we need to have equal representation in these meetings from our Latinx families and um, our families of color. I think that these meetings can sometimes be very overwhelming for non-English speaking families. And we need to make sure that they have a seat at the table as well so they know what's going on. Um, in terms of what I'm looking for, for this panel to make sure that we finally have someone that can hopefully stick around for the long run is that we have someone again, like everyone has said that knows our city, but um, also represents our families and our kids. It would be wonderful to have someone that is multilingual, that is a person of color. Um, we need to have this representation in our community. Our students are, um, reflective of a wide range of diversity and the powers that be in our administration also need to reflect that. I also wanna make sure that we have equal um, partnership with our schools and teachers. I do feel that we need some more reaching out to our schools because although we have two teachers on this panel, if someone can correct me if it's um, a different number, but I do believe there are two. Uh, our conditions in our schools are very, very different around the city. And we need to make sure that we're looking at the larger picture 
and not some of just the major name schools that are always um, represented. Uh, lastly, I am hoping that, like everyone has said, we have transparency and someone that really understands that most of our families are uh, experiencing a lot of trauma through the pandemic. We need someone who is really going to be open to listening to what our families and our staff are going through on a daily basis. So looking for transparency and someone that really has a background and knowledge of working in schools as a teacher or as a closer administrator, because we can't have someone that has not worked in a school for 10 or more years. That's just not gonna put us in a good position. Um, so see, these are just some of the things that I'm looking for in this panel. And I appreciate everyone for putting this together. Thank you. Thank you. Um, sorry about my dog's noise. As we get ready for our next speakers, I'll go ahead and, and call the next three. We have Edith Basil, Fesca Philippe, and Diego Labrador. Ms. Basil, you're next. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having this listening session. So I do believe that my number one is that the next superintendent has to be willing to tackle systemic racism. It is the reason that we have these equity issues. And unless the superintendent is able to tackle uh, systemic racism and dismantle policies that are rooted in anti-Blackness, policies that disadvantage um, black and brown populations. I think that, that that will continue to be a challenge. I think that a superintendent needs to have urban leadership experience, but also a proven track record for literacy results for black and brown students and particularly English learners. Literacy is a huge issue in the district. And unless our children are able to read and write effectively, using the higher order thinking skills, and particularly with early childhood, have that base of support of early literacy throughout the grades, but also for those who need tier one and tier, tier three interventions is critical. The superintendent needs to be able to leverage a high performing team. Having a team that is effective in supporting schools is really critical. Um, a team that can collaboratively, collaboratively create policies procedures and practices that are equitable, that build safe and healthy school environments that are culturally responsive and reflect our students with black teachers in particular based upon the research um, and really honoring the dignity of intellect um, it, um, that is culturally different. So honoring students background, their experiences. Leadership that uses research, research and evidence-based instructional and assessment practice is critical. And having job embedded professional development for teachers that's driven by data, progress monitoring and continually, continually, continual improvement, but also amplifying and celebrating teacher leadership. Examples that are excellent from our teaching force. Thank you. Thank you. We have Fiska Philippe next. Good evening. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Um, th again, thank you all for this time. My name is Jessica Philippe and I am a resident of Dorchester. I have four babies in the BPS system, um, three at the Nathan Hale and one at the Boston Arts Academy. Um, this definitely is such an important session that we are holding and I'm very surprised that we have um, only 200 attendees. And I wonder if it's just a matter of us improving our communication skills and ensuring that everyone is well aware that this is happening. Um, I received uh, this the notification about this through the schools. And so um, we still have a lot of, you know, building within um, our communication systems to allow that our families know that, you know, these sessions are occurring. Um, one of the things that I definitely want to address about a superintendent for, for, for us and our 
neighborhood specifically is that a lot of folks brought this into mind is that having someone that is just really knowledgeable and well aware of the Boston systems and Boston's history, you know, as we all know, we are sitting on the one of the most um, racist institutionalized structures in the nation. We are, um, you know, through, uh, through everything that's happened, it would just be really um, amazing to have someone that has deep understanding and knowledge of how that has played a role in a lot of inequities that take place within this city. And another thing that I saw what, you know, that was done with this last superintendent that I thought was a good start, but needs to be continued is that there was a hundred day of visiting a school a day. And that's that's fine and dandy, but going there to take photo ops and just kind of sitting there is not necessarily what we need. We need someone to really go in there, take their time within every single structure, talk to families, talk to communities, and really be able to hear what the challenges and issues are. Um, and then lastly, we really need to make sure that the system that we currently have in place is reconstructed because it's not it's not working. Uh, transportation continues to be a really, really big issue. Um, literacy continues to be a really big issue. Miss Edith pretty much laid it out with everything that when it comes to structural um, racism and anti-blackness that occurs within the BPA structure. So we really want someone that is thoughtful, that really knows what they're talking about and really has a full commitment to um, dismantling a current system that has not worked for majority of us. And then lastly, I would just say that if we could start to change the times of these meetings, because there's people that work third shift and that they're not able to, to you know, to participate. And I know that folks have other jobs and other commitment, but maybe we can just break them down with different time frames to give everyone the opportunity to share their, their, um, their thoughts and, and remarks. Thank you all again. Thank you. Um, our next three speakers will be Diego Labrador, Anne Marie Vaduba, and Philippe Lederer. So, Diego, you are next. Um, Diego, you will see that you need to accept if you still want to make your remarks, but if not, we can move on to our next um, speaker. You can unmute. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Qué pena es que tengo eh, muy mala la señal, la recepción de internet. Ok, ¿quiere hacer su comentario o...? Pues en este momento no, ya voy llegando a la casa, me puedo conectar a la red Wi-Fi y tal vez... Ok, se no hay problema. No hay problema. So Mr. Diego is having um, a little bit of a connectivity issue. So he will um, join us momentarily from, um, from his home. So we will allow him to speak at a later time. Philippe Lederer, you're next. Actually, my apologies. Anne-Marie Vuva, you are next. Okay, great. Um, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Anne-Marie Vuva. I'm uh, a, a parent um, whose son attended um, BPS uh, from K0 to K2, and uh, he's an IEP student. And um, this year in first grade, uh, he, he was bolting out of the classroom and no matter what was tried, he kept bolting out of the classroom. He is autistic. Um, I, we are homeschooling now, but I'm hoping to return to um, next year to a BPS school. Um, so, you know, from my perspective as the mother of an autistic child, um, I see that um, uh, 
there are very few schools in BPS who are trained to understand how to help autistic students and students with behavioral challenges in um, mainstream sort of um, classrooms that are uh, like basically designed to, to service neurotypical students. Um, and um, I would love for a superintendent to be someone with deep knowledge um, uh, about um, how autistic and other neuro neurodivergent students learn, for example, students with ADHD. I, based on my experience um, in BPS, what I noticed that was very surprising to me while my son was at that school was that, uh, for example, sometimes students would be walking through the hallway and they were having behavioral issues like talking loudly, saying things that shouldn't be said, um, you know, poking holes in walls. And it's as if nothing was happening. It would just go unaddressed. Um, and I felt like that was a disservice to the whole school community, but of course to the student. Obviously a student, students need help with their emotions, with their behaviors. Um, and unfortunately, how to help students with behavioral problems is not something that is always straightforward. And I feel like as a parent of an autistic child who has had to learn a lot about autism, um, my that knowledge and that self-training that I did was disregarded when I was um, advocating for my son. And um, um, so I had no choice. It was either him continuing to bolt and his mental health issues increasing and him his behavioral in the classrooms increase, increasing to the detriment of everyone, including himself, or take him out. Um, what I would like to also say, other than that, is that um, if a superintendent comes in from out of Boston, um, it would really be helpful for them to have like a top five list of the most common problems and complaints that parents, teachers, administrators, whoever have. The, and I'm not sure if there's any data that BPS keeps uh, like, you know, tracking what are the most common problems at BPS. I know buses are a common problem. I know that kids with behavioral challenges, you know, end up having a lot of issues, having accommodations and teachers being able to accommodate them, for example. Those are two that I think are very common. But I feel like a superintendent ought to kind of understand be able to look at a system and understand its most common problems and be able to speak to how they would solve those problems. Mm -hmm. And that should be part of the interview process. And um, one last thing, um, I think if an incoming person is given those, a list of most common problems that need to be solved, then all interviewees or uh, candidates could then write a plan for how they would solve those problems specifically yeah sorry and then I just, yeah i just want to yeah. make sure that we have other hands if you don't mind um two things you can add additional remarks on the chat if you would like i just want to give others an opportunity and if we do have time after um all the hands that are raised um we could certainly give you another chance but if you could just quickly close that would be great yeah that was it uh, just uh, give superintendents who are apply people who are applying, give them a chance to actually address specific problems as part of the interview process. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate your comments. Um, our next three speakers will be Philip Lederer, Ricardo Christie, and Latoya Gale. Philip? Yes, thank you so much for having me. Muchas gracias por tenerme aquí. My name is Philip Lederer. I am a community health center physician at Uplands Corner Health Center in Dorchester with a background in public health and infectious diseases. I'm also the parent of a first grader at Manning Elementary School. I asked my son, Joe, what do we need from a new superintendent? He said, more sports. And I actually take his his statement, seriously, I think we need to have a lot better athletics for 
Boston Public Schools. We need to have better um, fields for them to run and play on, teams for them to play. The kids need to be burning a lot more energy and be a lot more physically active so that they can sit and think and learn and concentrate. So I think improved athletics needs to be a top priority. Along with that, I echo so many other things that were already said. Uh, I think that an internal candidate would be very important. Um, I think the elected school committee is a crucial issue. I think that diversity, equity, inclusion, um, a bilingual superintendent who knows Boston and someone who can really focus on systemic racism in the city are important issues because we all know the elephant in the living room about the private schools, the private academies, which I'm not gonna name, but where people send their kids who have money, as well as the public schools, public districts outside the city, Newton, Wellesley, et cetera. It's a very, very unequal system. Other things, I think we need much better music and art education based on El Sistema, the Venezuelan model, which is used at CLCS, the Conservatory Lab Charter School in Dorchester. That model of intensive music education could really benefit students across the district. Mental health and trauma. There is so much trauma in this city. Uh, as a physician, I have taken care of many patients who have gone through trauma related to COVID, and we need a huge focus on that. Foreign language learning. Um, we could be doing much better with uh, teaching foreign languages in the district. Next, I think we need a peacemaking curriculum. What do I mean by a peacemaking curriculum? Well, we can look at what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. We can also look, on, look at the violence and the shootings in the city of Boston. And a peacemaking curriculum would focus on just that, peace, teaching students how to resolve conflicts non-violently. If you could week, please wrap up your remarks, but your time is up, thank you. I'll stop there, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we have Ricardo Christie next. Ricardo, are you with us? Yes, one second. Oh, thank you. That's not a lot of questions. <laughs> All right. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Ricardo Christie. I'm a father of three children, two at the Nathan Hill and one at the Mando, who's autistic as well. Um, as for many teeth, Many parents were so in the Boston public school system. Um, I actually grew up in Boston and have been through elementary school, middle school, and high school, all through BPS, two of which my schools are now closed that I grew up going to. Um, as a parent, I feel as if we go through superintendents too many, too often in Boston public. Um, I know we are the first public school system within America, and I feel like we should be the best public school system in America, on top of the fact that we have all these higher up education, all these colleges, universities, and everything else in the school system or in the Boston area, but yet we're lacking in our public school system. Um, I feel like we should have a superintendent that is open to hear out new ideas from parents. Um, I know I have many ideas to help improve the school system. I reached out to the teachers and they all have agreed. Those are great ideas that I have to improve the school system. Um, also, I have someone that's open to have an open door policy with parents and teachers. Um, I served 10 years in the military, retired. And that's one thing all of our commanders always had an open door policy. No matter what rank, no matter what level you are in the military, you could come in through the door, reach out, talk to them with any grievances, any ideas to better the unit. And I feel like that's one thing with BPS that we need to be able to, to be open with our superintendent to let them know these are the things that need to happen, changes that we feel should be implemented and they should hear us out. Um, I feel as if, I feel also that we should have monthly meetings with the supervisor, with the superintendent, that parents can reach out and actually communicate with the superintendent to let the superintendent know what's going on in the city, what's going on with parents, what our ideas are, 
so they can actually implement changes based off of what is actually going on. A way for them to be hands-on with the parents as well. Um, also, I feel there should be a board of parents that actually communicates with BPS. So therefore we can all communicate with ourselves. So the superintendent knows what's really going on because there's too many parents, not enough staff. Um, Ricardo, if you could start wrapping up because your two minutes are up. Yep, um, pretty much one last thing is making sure that we have a superintendent as well that make sure we have the right leadership that's in the school system that's not trying to just get a check and to actually care for our students and making sure that the same thing goes with the teachers. That's all. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Our next uh, three speakers are Latoya Gale, um, SH are the initials, um, and Robert Jenkins. Latoya, whenever you're ready. Hello. Hi, Latoya, we can hear you. Hi, okay, you can hear me? Hi. Um, um, I think that if I could say the top three things that our next superintendent should focus on is, is transparency and equity and the autonomy to actually implement whatever, whatever those ideas are that we hire them to do. I think, you know, there's not a lot of, I'm sorry, my six month old is like making noise in the background. Um, um, I think that we have this problem with trust because it seems like the, the city hall and the mayor's office controls our superintendent. I think it's great that the superintendent has a great relationship with school committee. We don't want a contentious relationship right there, but we need them to be able to be a superintendent. If the, if the school committee and, this, and the families and the teachers and the people who are doing the work every day all agree that something should be done and should be happening, we shouldn't feel like we have this heavy hand from City Hall who's controlling what is actually being done. You know, the business of school is teaching and learning. I think it would be amazing if we could have someone who has experience in a school, in a classroom, as a parent, I have been able to trust school leaders. I have been able to trust teachers in the classroom. I have not been able to trust the district as a whole. I have been able to trust people on school committee, but I have not been able to trust the district as a whole. And I think unless, until we feel like there's this autonomy that those people that we do trust can work together, have that ability to work together, we're gonna have this churn of people and we're gonna have this distrust with parents. And there are certain things that are non-negotiables. I know I got 15 seconds left. Everyone should know how to read. That's a non-negotiable. And I think we should have a superintendent who can commit to that and do whatever it takes for that to happen. And, and please make sure that all families have the, the, the opportunity to give feedback. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, our next um, speaker is S.H. Those are the initials. You can unmute. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, welcome. Okay, hi. All right, I'm going on camera so it switches. Okay, hi, um, my name is Sonia um, and I'm a parent and I'm also um, a uh, former teacher and substitute teacher in BPS as well as a graduate of BPS K through 12. And I've actually also attended uh, an exam school as well. Um, what my um, question would be for an incoming superintendent is I would like to know what her goals are uh, what her personal uh, goals are for the district. Uh, it could be her top three, it could be her top five goals. I have had the uh, advantage of being in the classrooms. I see some principals here tonight that I've worked in their schools. Um, I've had the luxury of being a parent. And I do wanna say I got the text this evening at 4.38 p.m. about this meeting. 
I then asked my daughter if she brought home any notice and the answer was no. Um, so moving on from there, the communication and valuing parent participation, parent uh, voice, uh, it really needs to be included and it needs to be authentic. It's one thing for us all to sit here tonight and say what we would like a superintendent to bring to the table to offer and what we would like to see. But if it isn't genuine, um, if it isn't in the heart, we're going to get the same results. Reading definitely is a, a major factor. And we know that uh, in the early grades, students learn to read and then they read to uh, the, uh, read to learn. And if they're not accessing uh, the curriculum across grade level, that's going to carry on through uh, their uh, matriculation through the system. And we know there's a correlation between crime and, and, and uh, poor reading skills. And so I'd like to see uh, the data around reading updated in the district. I'd like to see all schools teaching from the same curriculum. I do know for a fact that that's not true with science and that came from an outside source. Um, so I, I think that we need a parent uh, oversight committee and um, it, it, it could be challenging, but I do second the parent that say that we can't trust the district. And also we're in districts with highly qualified teacher, but teachers, but a majority of our kids are failing generation after generation. So there's a lot of work to be done. And I don't think the superintendent is the only one to do that work. It takes a team effort. So we all have to be on board. Thank you, Sonia. Um, oh, do you have something else? Okay. Um, our next three speakers will be Robert Jenkins, Theresa Algard de Jesus, and Tiara Murphy. Mr. Jenkins, you can unmute. Yes. Good. Good evening, everyone. Uh, our next superintendent must understand the complexities that Boston has offered. We are a rich, diverse city, but have to understand that everybody has to be on board. Every school should look the same way and operate the same way. There's a saying I learned in a movie, one band, one sound. What happens in one school should happen in every school. Equity, access to a quality of education for our students and families. That's not going on right now. There's a serious disconnect with BPS and the BTU and elected officials and the community. And I say that because I see this firsthand, but I don't want to say it in a bad way, but I just say what I see. When I hear parents say that they have kids at one school that are following the policies and procedures of school parents, school site councils and engagement, but it's not going on at another school. You know, I've been on the Madison Park school site council for 10 years. This year was the first year we had access to a whole budget with spreadsheets and dialogue with students, parents, teachers, and community partners. That should be what happens in every school. I go to school meetings and where there's supposed to be, you know, equity roundtables, it's not going on, but we got to look at why that isn't going on. It's systematically happening. I am a graduate of Madison Park in 1978. My freshman year was desegregation. We're back for almost 40 plus years and we're still at the same start. We're still getting inequitable education for our students across the city. You know, so that superintendent coming in has to understand that they have to work with the whole team. It's the village raising the village. But if the left hand and right hand don't know what's going on, that's why you have all these problems now. You know, uh, we have some serious issues. They have to understand the exam schools, the GPA proposed upgrade. I think that 1.67 is, you know, atrocious. But again, some of our kids can't pass 1.67. We're going to raise it to 2.0. We have to that that superintendent has to get us the necessary resources and have systems in place to make sure that we, that all of our students are learning at, are learning in equitable education. I'm at Madison Park, you know, the only vocational school in the city of Boston. One thing I can say that the outgoing superintendent did put resources to Madison Park and we are on the upswing. 
we have a ways to go, but that superintendent has to understand that's coming in. That vocational, a dual education at Madison Park is key in getting uh, the necessary resources. Mr. So Jenkins, if you could just wrap your uh, last comments. Thank you, because your time is up. Sorry about that. All right, yeah, no, no, no problem. I mean, I'm fine right there, but I'll write everything down. But again, and I just want to say, I just passed in the rest of my paperwork to be a paraprofessional, sixth grade at the least. So I'm going to be around. Thank you. Thank you. Our next three speakers will be Theresa Albert de Jesus, Tiara Murphy, and Jessica Curtis. So let's go with Theresa. You can unmute. Hi, I'm a parent of a, a 12 year old. She's in the sixth grade. Um, I agree with the person who said we definitely need to talk about um, um, the reading with children in school. My problem is there are so many uh, different languages, children speaking different languages, uh, and, and a lot of focus and money is put into that, and it's really important. I, I agree with that, but I'd like to see the superintendent incorporate a baseline language that access to all students across the district. I'd love to see my, uh, my granddaughter uh, speak or even know the, 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 the uh, basic of another language, uh, Spanish. There are so, so many uh, uh, Spanish speaking, but none of the children are learning any type of a different language. So I would like to see the superintendent incorporate um, some type of uh, language where uh, children are speaking uh, or, or even learning just even the basic alphabet of another language. Um, I'm concerned with the, uh, the writing. My uh, sixth grader can barely, literally barely write her name in cursive. I've seen a lot of children can't even write cursive in the seventh and eighth grade properly. So I like to see somehow the superintendent uh, incorporate um, uh, at an early stage, third, fourth grade, learning cursive writing. And again, reading is very important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Tiara Murphy is next. Hi everyone, my name is Tiara Murphy and um, I'm a mom of two children. I have a three month old and I have a seven year old. My seven year old right now attends the Winship and um, when we had moved from Weymouth and um, my son was obviously transitioning into BPS and all I wanna say is, I think our next superintendent really needs to tackle these welcome centers and bridge the gap between the communication that they have with parents and their children's school placements. My son um, was just, is on an IEP and he was just placed um, at the Winship. However, he may have to switch because of, due to his IEP being a, a, a totally different, it's, it's an all-inclusive um, classroom and he's not, he, they don't have that at the Winship. So I really do think that these welcome centers need to be revamped, whether they need to be retrained or they need to get more people in there or new people in there to really look these things over. My son, we had moved November 15th. We, he didn't get placed into school until December 5th was when my son started school. And I just felt like that was just way too long. It was really ridiculous what I had to go through. Um, I also wanna say, just piggybacking off of everyone else, there needs to be transparency. Black and Latinx families need to have voice, vote at the tables. We need to be included around all discussions. This meeting, I got a text tonight at five o'clock about this meeting. There needs to be more communication with parents. Um, I also wanna say that um, we need to make sure that you know, parents are, are in the know. Um, they need to be more tutoring services. They need to be, you know, I, my child being on an IEP and, he, and he's so behind. 
So I just really want to, you know, emphasize the fact that the next superintendent really needs to be familiar with what's going on in Boston because Boston is a tough city. That's all. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have Jessica Curtis and Carmen Morales next. So we'll go with Jessica. Hi everyone. My name is Jessica Curtis. I'm a BPS parent with a seven-year-old currently at the Umana, um, which is a dual language school in East Boston. And I want to first affirm everything the previous speakers have said. Um, I've really heard nothing I disagree with and so much that strikes, you know, just sounds right. So thanks for all of those comments. Um, I want to just add some things that I haven't heard. And one is that I think in addition to hiring someone locally, it would be wonderful if we could hire someone who also looks like and sounds like the majority of our students who are currently attending BPS, um, which would be a great way and really celebrates that identity. Um, and then rather than focusing on some of the qualities which others have talked about, one of the questions that I would ask is how the superintendent use his or her role or their role as a coalition builder. And by that, I mean a coalition builder within BPS to navigate transportation, facilities, teachers, staff, all of those different issues that I think a lot of us know what those issues are, but also across citywide stakeholders. Um, and by that, I also mean here in East Boston, we've had a number of people displaced with gentrification and uh, the cost of living going up. That has real implications for our school budgets. How, what is, how does the superintendent see their role in really bringing those issues to light and thinking about those as also education issues? And then the second question that I would have for the superintendent would be, what do they see their role being in addressing the downstream impacts of systemic racism? So in addition to having it as part of the curriculum, part of school culture, I think communication with parents who are non-English speaking um, or who are differently abled is a huge issue. And I'm routinely on the corner with parents who don't speak English waiting for buses that are 30, 45 minutes late. They don't have the same tools I have to outreach, to do outreach and figure out where those folks are. Um, and another issue that I think um, comes up for a lot of parents, how do we address the fundraising that well-resourced parents, frankly, like myself, can do to get extracurricular activities in our schools and make that equitable for others who don't have the same resources. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Um, we have Carmen Morales next, and um, that looks to be our last hand raise. If there are other speakers, oh, a few more hands just came up. We'll have um, Carmen, then Carol Churchill, then Christine Langoff. Carmen? Hi. Um, I don't really speak much English, but the little bit that I can, you know, let you guys know is that um, I am very concerned about the communication. And, you know, like, um, like the other um, lady before was saying, you know, um, our kids, um, you know, there is lacking too much in um, a lot of their um, school um, homeworks and and we need more communications with the teachers. And I got that same, um, the same, um, what do you call it? Um, the For the meeting, I got it late too, like an hour, you know, before the meeting, so. You know, it's, it's, it's sad, you know, we understand um, the situation of the COVID, but um, at the same time, you know, our, our kids, uh, our school students, my, my son is in Boston Land Academy, and, you know, he, he doesn't have, like, they don't give him um, a lot of information, and he always come here, I ask him questions, and he comes here and he says, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Um, 
not emailing the teachers, I mean the parents, but calling the parents and informing the parents as well. If the parents can't go into the school, um, informing the parents how their, their students are doing and, and learning how to um, write in cursive, um, more communication, more communication. Thank you so much, Carmen. Your English was great. Um, so thank you for that. We have Carol Churchill next. Oh, hello. Yes, uh, my name is Carol Churchill. I also live in East Boston. I appreciate what the previous lady who's also in East Boston, the previous parent had said. I agree with her wholeheartedly. We're um, ourselves uh, in our gentrification, but that'd be a great thing for the next um, superintendent to help address. And um, I am uh, also on my son's school site council now for a num number of years. Uh, my child is at the James Otis School in East Boston, and it's an excellent school. Um, aside from agreeing with um, the, the, the previous lady, I'm sorry, I forgot her name, uh, but she, she just stated it excellently. But my main kind of comment or concern, I just want to state calmly, and I put it in the chat, is I'm just very sad to see Dr. Casilius go, and it probably at this point is an absolute permanent decision that she left, resigned, was fired, uh, whatever the cause is, we may never know. It may be too personal and private, but I knew her well. I met her several times in person pre-COVID when she did hold a lot of community meetings, like at the Amana Barnes School in East Boston. And I saw her vision. She had the community collaborate with her system of joy, inclusion, equity, and all this and that. I've corresponded with her personally each year um, through writing, text, and I just feel that you're, you're not, you're, I just good luck in finding anybody as educated, as concerned um, about students, and as lovely a person with her whole life of experience of teaching, being a principal, a teacher, a state educator. I know she came from Minnesota and wasn't familiar with Boston, but I think she did darn good. She had was a little distracted by because it's a world emergency. We've just are like emerging through now. She had to take some time to do COVID safety issues for the schools and all of us. So she didn't quite get all her plans in place. But I mean, it, it was the biggest emergency of all of our lives. And, you know, I think she deserved to stay a little longer. She would have with a little more support. And I'm, I'm very sad to see her go. And you know, lots of luck with this search. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Um, before I call our next um, speaker, um, there was a comment that the Haitian Creole channel has a lot of noise in the background. So if our interpreter could maybe adjust um, and, and check their um, microphone or, um, uh, or their setting to make sure there's no additional um, noise, we appreciate that. Thank you so much. Our next three speakers will be Christine Langhoff, Sharon Hinton, and Eric Olson. Christine. Christine, you can unmute. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Welcome. Hi, I'm Christine Langhoff. I'm a Dorchester resident. I'm a retired BPS teacher after 36 years. I'm also the parent of three BPS graduates and I'm a BPS graduate myself. The question I would ask of any candidate for superintendent is this one. There are deep pocketed groups like the Pioneer Institute and some local foundations urging a state takeover of Boston's public schools. The rationale is that the standardized test scores of Boston students are too low. Boston serves the largest, most complex student body in the state. 
Our students have a high incidence of poverty and homelessness. Many do not have English as a home language. We have many kids with complex special education needs with interrupted or limited formal education. In other words, students who statistically receive low scores on standardized tests. In addition, no state takeover, including of any school in Boston has been successful. What steps would the superintendent take to assure that our schools remain under local control and that our students are not funneled into charter schools that their parents have not chosen for them? Thank you. Thank you so much. And then we have Sharon Hinton and Eric Olson. Sharon, when you're ready, you can unmute. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sharon Hinton. I am an educator, parent of a BPS graduate. I attended Boston Public Schools as well. And I'm also the executive director and founder of Black Teachers Matter. My concern is that with the high turnover, are we finding out why? The lack of transparency in terms of why this one is leaving concerns me. I've seen comments in the chat about if she's leaving, if it's mutual, why is she getting paid? Well, it's contractual and she has a good lawyer. Um, but my concern is the turnover and the fact that there's so much politics involved. Um, the MOU that actually agreed to, and I can't see the clock, I'm sorry, that agreed to um, this receivership that is, re that is looming over our head was actually signed three days before the pandemic uh, shut everything down in 2020. So I'm wondering if that can be pushed back and that is a concerted effort for everybody. And also the elected versus appointed that almost 99,000 people voted on. Um, you get a superintendent and then in a year or so you've got an elected school committee. And what does that mean? Does that mean that contractually the superintendent has different bosses? I mean, I, I think it's a really complicated and trying to get someone permanently in four months is a little ambitious. I'm hopeful, but it's a little ambitious. Um, I think the school committee should take some more time. And I understand that you want people permanently in place, but I'll say it again. I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record. We need to take the time to get the person who's really gonna stay. Brenda Caselia said she was invested. She was planning on staying and she's leaving and she's leaving and a lot of other qualified people are leaving. I'm not so sure that someone from Massachusetts or Boston would do better. I think we have a we have a bunch of talent and we need to look at that as well. And the search committee, I think has a timetable that they're sticking to. And I'm hoping the school committee is a little bit more flexible about that considering the importance that we need in terms of stability, which is what the um, DESE is saying, the reason why they're poised to take over. So I'm behind the school committee pushing back. I think you guys have a yeoman's job um, in terms of what you're trying to do. And so communication is the key. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. We have Eric Olson next. Eric, you can unmute. You were unmuted for a second and then back on mute. Hi, how are you doing? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Welcome. Oh, great, great. So I'm a relatively new Boston Public Schools parent at Josiah Quincy Elementary School and also a, a citywide parent uh, rep for, for our school. Um, and I, I thank you for, for everybody's feedback and I'm, I'm learning a lot from all the parents here and just how complex Boston is. I think as a parent, uh, the most concerning thing, and I'd like to echo what Sharon just said, is stability here. It's, it's very alarming that there's been such a high level of turnover and, and I'm not surprised the state is like, what's going on down there? Let's, let's take the situation over. Um, what, what I would recommend is that this committee uh, get somebody who is a, has a long-term kind of strategic planning type of personality, um, comes in, uh, can develop a plan, can clearly articulate that plan. A lot of folks tonight said that they had no idea what was going on and also uh, be allowed the time to execute that plan. So um, I think 
you know, just having stability and somebody who's a strategic planner and somebody who can uh, motivate and execute the plan would 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 uh, would um, make the most sense. Uh, also, I'm not sure what the committee can do about this, but um, I, I don't think it would be. It, 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 there's something needs to be done about just giving somebody enough time to be able to to, to execute a plan. Um, would, the worst case scenario would really be somebody coming <laughs> in. <laughs> somebody coming in here and, and uh, getting kicked out after two years. So um, just, just to reiterate, it, it's really just getting somebody who can develop a plan, communicate it, execute it, um, and really take a look at this really complex situation across the city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. Um, Fatuma, I think you may have accidentally come into the English channel. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it kicked me off and then I can't sign back on. Okay, we'll look into that on the back end and update you on the chat. All right, thank you for that. Oh, you're all set. You should be all set now, Fatuma. Thank you, Lena. Um, our next two speakers are Carol Zorro and Yori Losordo. Carol, we're gonna go with you. Oh, Carol, you have to accept um, if you want to um, speak, if you see the prompt, you have to accept it in order to be able to speak. Um, let's go with Yori first and then give Carol a chance um, afterwards. Yori, you can unmute. Hi, thanks for letting me speak. Um, I'm Yuri Lasordo. I live in Dorchester with my two kids who are at the Kenny, and this is my seventh year as a BPS parent. I think it's critical for the next superintendent to not just be a Boston resident, but someone who has put roots down here and understands the power dynamics of the city. BPS is the largest part of the city's budget and uh, the superintendent needs to understand that they are in a political position. They need to love and understand people. They need to be a great, uh, great people manager, make sure that BPS offers a great work environment for our teachers and our district staff. Um, they need to be an operational superstar. The yearly issues with buses and assignments are unacceptable, as is the short notice for tonight. Short or no notice for public hearings have been a recurring problem my entire time at BPS. Um, the superintendent also needs to be an excellent communicator and get the messaging right about what's happening at BPS, because a lot of what's happening is actually good. Um, but in the absence of good messaging, we get nonsense like what's come out of the Pioneer Institute lately. Um, lastly, I think it's a given that kids can't learn when they don't have stable housing, are food insecure, are dealing with trauma. And too often it's the teachers who are on the front lines of these societal issues. And we have some of the best trained, most qualified teachers in the country who are being asked to do so much more than just teach. Um, I think in a superintendent, we need somebody who is actually a very savvy politician. You can work with City Hall and other leaders of our community um, to make sure that our caregivers um, uh, have the help that they need to provide these stable homes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next um, speaker, oh, I just missed their Sanal Patel. Yes, hi, good evening. Good. I just wanted to share my uh, thoughts, right? And what I think, I think the next superintendent has to be a visionary. Um, COVID has definitely changed uh, the way that technology, the availability of technology and learning, um, you know, and ability to really broaden the horizon of what learning needs to look like. 
and be able to give us the ability to rethink what does education need to look like and how can you expand it so you can standardize it beyond in, you know, all the disparate individual schools that are part of BPS. And along with that, I think is equally challenging is basic things that is infrastructure of the schools um, with some being very old infrastructure or challenging where you know, wireless is, is an issue or things that there are limited STEM facilities, access to technology, um, you know, learning for kids. Um, and equally is the other part of the food is that there are a lot of school, schools which don't even have where, you know, the feedback that I as a parent and the school that my son attends, and it's an exam school, is that the kids are not eating lunch. Well, how can we expect kids to perform well if the nutrition isn't there through a lack of consistent quality of food when kids are going, you know, leaving home at or waking up at six, leaving home at 7 a.m. and not coming home till six at night and mine's only a seventh grader. Um, so I think that we definitely need someone who's a visionary in being able to standardize rather than have so many disparate schools and uh, options within BPS. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ivory White. And after Ivory, we'll have Stephanie Rodriguez. Ivory, you can unmute. Hello, good afternoon. Can you guys hear me? Yes, welcome. Oh, hi. I don't know if you can see me, but that's okay. I look okay. Well, all right. Well, it is what it is. Um, hello, my name is Ivory White. Um, I'm a parent of a K. Miss Malnery, she's K zero K one, so like the earliest grade. Um, I'm uh, she goes to the Winship. I'm really appreciative of the grade sensitivity they have. They actually at the school. I didn't know about. I didn't know. Yes. In their class one something, they have great activities. I didn't know about the meeting. Um, until maybe an hour before I did get a text message. So I do like that. And it's really great how they're using technology for that. And um, so I do like they're using the phone situation. You can even use it for finding the bus. I've had to use, find the bus. I didn't know other people were was experiencing that. Um, but yeah, but you can use your phone for that. So for the superintendent, first I'd like to say, Shout out to the parents. Um, us being here is great. I'm learning a lot just sitting here listening. Um, Parents, shout out to us, we're really on it. And like, definitely when we're mentioning how there needs to be a communication line, transparency, I loved how, um, what's his name, Mr. Christie, he had mentioned a board of parents. That was the first, I had just, I joined, I heard that. That's definitely something that I, I think is important. Um, I can't say anything, so just tell me when the two minutes is up. Um, so yeah, shout out to the parents. I like Mr. Ricardo Christie, I just mentioned, I love something he had said. Um, Mrs. Churchill had mentioned um, great things about the intendant now, superintendent. I'm sorry I didn't have a, a you know relationship, so that's great. They a lot of great things. Just the parents are really showing out. Um, so what what I think that collects what's important for the superintendent, what's needed. Um, it's definitely we need a change in the system. I think uh, somebody had said that a female, great, well spoken, um, said we need a change in the system. So obviously, what's going on right now is not working. A lot of vulnerable areas are saying, "Hey, we we need help now, and we, we still need help." And they're vulnerable groups. Um, so we know of them. Um, when it, whether there's a, it's a learning disability, whether it's you know maybe behavioral, uh, you know the the black and brown and different groups um uh you know where the vulnerable groups are saying hey we need help so there needs to be a change in the system um i think it's something very important is that the superintendent needs to have a backbone in keeping the history open and true in our public school systems apparently it's you know i need to say that because we're open to um lying or not tell not not telling a part of history um for some reason I, that's something that we that, that we're doing. I gotta say, so that he needs to be able to do that. She needs to be able to do that. Um, 
more if you could start money. wrapping up your thoughts that would be great yes okay start. okay thank you last important point more money in bps schools i'd seen that written in the chat i'd see i know it was mentioned money money needs to be in the schools and i can see that too something i will say is that i've seen i've thought of this just in past by is that the bps schools now with the students that look different you see the students now you see the students like 50 years ago and they look completely different and you look at the school and it'd be the same school the books the computers i feel like you know the things they need the basics right now to build on so money is important and groups that are from cities with not with not a lot of money they're not getting any, enough right now it's still an issue that's crazy so the superintendent definitely needs to see that and address that um, he or she has a big job, but they have great parents to support them. Thank you for this chat, ma'am. Thank you so much for coming. Um, we have Stephanie Rodriguez Rees next. Um, and I just want to call up for a time check that it is um, 740 and we are approaching the last 20 minutes of our meeting. Um, I know that the chat has been active all throughout the night. We appreciate all of your comments. So after Stephanie, I am going to transition us um, to um, the next portion of our meeting. Um, if there are additional um, comments, you can always send them to the address that was just posted. So Stephanie, you're next. You can unmute, Stephanie. Sorry, good evening. I just want to say as a last, um, I guess the last speaker is I really think it's important for us to think about why are we replacing the superintendent? I feel like that's an important step and important discussion to have before we talk about who's the next person. I wonder if there's going to be some discussion between the, um, the potential new candidates and um, Dr. Caselius. I wonder if we're going to really talk about this real issue, excuse me, real issue that we're having at BPS where we have a high turnover of superintendents. I think um, it's important for the school committee and families and, and Boston community to really delve into the reason why we're constantly replacing superintendents because if we don't address that issue, this is we're gonna continue to see ourselves talking about what we think is um, our good qualities in the next superintendent. So I just um, thought that that's really important to talk about. And I look forward to possibly um, hearing some transparent um, remarks from um, the city moving forward on why we're in this position again. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, and thank you to all of our speakers. These are um, all our speakers, Dr. Edinger and uh, Ms. Harvey. I'll turn the microphone over to you. Okay, thank you, Mary, and that was an amazing job facilitating this session. Um, again, this is Pam Edinger, and um, we want to thank our participants tonight. There are a number of you in chat, there are a number of questions posed, and um, a, a number of eloquent speakers who have laid out uh, issues for us to, to consider and questions for us to ask. Um, I've noted that there's been comments about there not being enough um, notification, so I want to be um, mindful about reminding folks that we have three more sessions scheduled, um, that um, they are a Spanish speaker session, which will be conducted entirely in Spanish next Tuesday. That is March 15th uh, from uh, the same time, 6 to 8 p.m. There will be a student session on Thursday, March 24th, also from 6 to 8 p.m. And then there's another general public session on Saturday on April 2nd from 10 to noon. Um, well, these, um, so these dates will, will get prompted for you um, as, as, as we go on, but please make a note if you wish to uh, come back again in, in these capacities. And all of, these, all of this information is posted on the website, on the school committee website and the city of Boston website. And community members may also provide written comments, as Miriam had um, had noted before, um, to the um, email address of superintendent search at bostonpublicschools.org. Um, the other thing to be on the lookout for is the superintendent search survey. 
uh, which will be posted on the BPS and the City of Boston websites. Um, and they, well, the survey will also be emailed to all the participants of these sessions. Uh, so I hope you will be able to access um, um, comment spaces and venues in all of these different ways. And tonight, on behalf of my co-host, Roxy Harvey, and all the members of the search committee, um, thank you again, and I wish you a good night. Oh, forgive me. I, I, I have neglected actually to um, acknowledge um, a member of um, Councillor Lydia Edwards' staff. Um, I believe Elaine Donovan was with us tonight through the session. So thank you for carrying the information back to the Councillor. And Dr. Enger, as the co-host, I also want to note that people have repeatedly asked if the chat is going to be shared. So I'm wondering if there's someone that can actually answer that question since it's been asked throughout the chat. Um, I think that we're going to discuss whether or not we can legally share the chat. We didn't say in advance that we would. And um, so, you know, as opposed to giving public comment, I don't know if the chat's considered. So we want to get some advice on that. Um, and obviously, if we can, it'll be posted along with the recording if we can. Thank you for responding to that, Ms. Snyder. Thank you. Okay, so I, I think um, I'm, I'm trying to check the participant numbers here. So folks are slowly um, logging off again. Thank you very much, all of you, uh, for being here. And if folks will take note again, why, while we're waiting for folks to, to sign off, maybe what I'll do is I'll repeat those sessions again. So the Spanish speaker session is next Tuesday at the same time, six to eight. And the student session is on a Thursday, March 24th from six to eight. And the general public session is April 2nd. That's on a Saturday from 10 to noon. So hopefully folks who, won't, who aren't available for this time slot will be able to join us then. And then write us if you have comments um, to superintendent search, all one word at bostonpublicschool.org. And then also be on the lookout for a, um, a superintendent search survey um, that will um, elicit from you similar information. Um, and that will be available on both the BPS, um, BPS website and the city of Boston website, an email to all of you uh, who participated in these sessions. Okay. Roxy, anything to add? You know, I just, honestly, I just want to thank everyone from families, teachers, everyone that came out. It has been a wonderful listening session just to hear from everyone. And we really do hope that everyone continues to fill out the survey when it's available and come to the other listening sessions also and continue to share the feedback because it's generally appreciated. So thank you all for being here tonight. And of course, my fellow listening, um, our selection committee members, thank you all for being here too. And our interpreters, of course, your work is always appreciated. So thank you. Actually, I'm seeing that there's still um, chat comments being posted. And we had said that the session would run from six to eight. So maybe we can go ahead and keep this channel open for, for another 13 minutes to allow folks some time um, if they wish to drop something in chat as well. We still have about 138 folks um, on the line. So I agree, because I think sometimes, you know, our, everyone's different schedules, someone might jump on at 7.50 that wants to share something. So right. if we're going to offer six to eight, then I think we should offer six to eight. Right. So yeah, I, I agree that there's no rush to end this. Um, we've made the time for it. We want to hear you. We'll hear you in chat. Um, so we'll, we'll be here. And actually, in terms of public information, this piece is probably good to mention. Um, the website for the BPS search is actually very rich in information. Um, it has a timeline, a general timeline as to how 
the process is going to be conducted. So if you're curious and you wanted a source to go low back, look back to, um, that's a good place to, to go look. Um, and, and then all the postings that we've promised you on the survey will be coming up on that channel as well. So there are questions about whether there are any closing comments. I think we've heard a lot tonight and it's gonna take us time and deliberate intent to, to, to do a little processing. Um, so we've taken good notes. Um, it, is, it is something that we hope, I think, close to our hearts. Um, we, were, we were concerned that folks are heard and that perspectives are heard. So rather than you know, being rushed to comment, I think it's important for us to be deliberate and, and to have some time to process. Um, and then we have three more sessions, plus your comments on the written ends to, to, to incorporate into our understanding. Um, Again, I'm looking at the Q and A's and, and there was a comment that says there have been many questions and will some of them be answered this evening? Again, we're trying to be deliberate. We need to hear all the comments in all the sessions and then do a more a credible job of, um, of processing it as a committee um, and as a group of folks that you've entrusted this process to. Um, so, so we'll be deliberate. I, I know it must be frustrating not to get answers right away, uh, but I think considered answers and, and informing the process will be important. Um, So, so our participants are leaving us very slowly. We have 116 folks who really want to hang on. Um, I'm, I'm very hardened by the fact that folks really do want to participate. And, and this is meaningful enough that once the formal pieces are, are over, that folks are hanging around. Um, that's a good sign. That's a really good sign. It's a beautiful sign. And I also want to remind the interpreters and the others listening on the other channels if you have if you want to raise your hand and also make comments that you will get double the time you'll get four minutes and the interpreters will translate on the english channel for you so we can hear um any of our speakers who want to share thoughts with us that speak other languages also so it's not that you have to speak english if you're on this channel so i just want to make sure the interpreters are sharing that too so we do also hear from individuals who may be using the interpreters Yes, that's a wonderful comment that we're concerned about our children's future and that's why we're around. Absolutely, absolutely agree with you, all of us around the table here. I do see that Jean Powers has the, we have, oh, we have two more hands up now. Oh, okay. Well, we, we still have eight minutes, so. Would that be, would that be okay, Mariam? Would you, would you accommodate us? We can we can go until eight o'clock. Okay. So we have Dean Powers and then Isatu Berry. Sorry if I uh, mispronounce your name. Dean. Oh, maybe they were leftover hands. No, they're new hands. 
Hi, I figured as long as no one else was talking, I'd say some more stuff. Um, I wanted to mention what someone else said in the um, chat and I didn't hear it spoken about that um, there also really needs to be a focus on buildings and infrastructure. And I really hope that the new superintendent can um, work with the Mass School Building Resources Authority and get funding from that and also have an expedited process so that projects get done before all of the kids who are at that school have aged out and had children of their own and moved to the suburbs. Um, and then I was also wondering, and you probably can't answer this, if there I, a lot of people, including myself, um, expressed a preference for a local candidate. And I was wondering if you had anyone in mind, if you're recruiting from the local population or if you're waiting for candidates to come to you or like how this whole thing is being structured. Um, I, I, the, I, the committee will, will be considering um, a, a search consultant and recruitment will be done by everybody and anybody. <laughs> we need as many good candidates around the table as we can find. Does that help? Okay. Thank you. I, again, Thank you. I would urge you to go to the website on, on uh, the, the, the BPS site and, and there, there will be information there um, that will give you um, a sense of how the committee is moving forward. Thank you for that. Okay. And we have um, Isatu Berry next. I said to you have to accept the prompt when it shows up on your screen, if you still want to make your comment. Um, I don't see I saw the showing up. Um, I know sometimes hands get raised by accident, so um, I'll take I'll send it back to you, um, Pam. Oh, okay. I think maybe did they? Nope. Okay, back to you. Four minutes to spare, and Philip had his hand up. Okay, it's back down. Well, I, I talked before, so if you still have a couple of minutes, um, I just wanted to bring up this, this, this has been fantastic, really great dialogue, a lot of diverse voices, and I look forward to more sessions like this. So thank you everyone for your work here. I just wanted to bring up a couple of things. One that I put in the chat was this question of a peacemaking curriculum. I think many of us are captivated by what's going on over in Ukraine and Russia right now, and are also captivated in Dorchester every time there's a shooting or anywhere in Boston or anywhere in the United States. And I think the critical importance for a superintendent to focus on a peacemaking curriculum at all levels of children's education, nonviolence education, conflict resolution, um, that's one thing. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring up was this idea of um, math, science, and technology programs um, at the high school level. I went to public schools in Kentucky and we had a math science technology program that I was lucky to get into in this public school. And it, I was just, it changed my life. It was, I was just very lucky that I had a great science education. Um, and I really hope that our high schools in Boston um, will double down along with everything else that we've been talking about from music to everything, um, athletics, really double down on the science education because uh, that is, a huge part of our future. Well, thank you, um, Mr. Letterer, for, for that comment. And I think we're coming up on 757. And and if the if the committee and folks around the table would agree, I think I think we are um, we're in a good place. So um, we'll say good night and um, and thank you again. And we we'll hope to uh, we hope you'll encourage your, your neighbors and 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 your and other BPS um, parents and 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 community to uh, attend the other three uh, venues and then participate also in writing. Okay, good night, everybody. Thank you so much for being here.